Hello, this is Andy from the Red Hat Kernel Storage Group. Today I'll be demonstrating Target D, which allows remote management of a Linux-based storage appliance, and LSMCLI, part of Lib Storage Management, which configures storage arrays in a vendor-neutral manner. The versions of Target D and Lib Storage Management I'm demonstrating are not yet available, but will be in Fedora 18 when it's released. First, I'm here in the shell running on the Target VM, and we're going to set up Target D. Target D glues together Linux LVM, Logical Volume Management, and LIO, the Linux kernel storage target, to present an API for remotely allocating volumes from an LVM storage group and exporting them with LIO to iSCSI initiators. So let's set up Target D. Dev VDB is an uninitialized block device on this machine. First, let's initialize it to an LVM physical volume, or PV. Next, we'll create an LVM volume group called VGTargetD that uses our single PV. Now we could name this VG something other than VGTargetD, but since targetD defaults to this name, uh, it's less for us to configure, so let's just do that. Next, let's take a look at targetD's configuration file. This is where we could choose different settings for target D. There aren't very many. Next, let's start target D. Instead of using system D as we would normally, let's just run it from the foreground. Okay, that's it. One thing I should mention, there's a bug in a library we're using that will cause target D to crash a little bit later. We've identified the issue and it's fixed in, it'll be fixed in the release but we're just going to work around it for now in the video since it's not relevant. So let's switch over to our administration node and try out LSM CLI. Lib Storage Management has a plugin architecture that gives the admin a common way to manage arrays from different vendors. One of the plugins it supports is for target D. First, let's set up some variables to define the remote storage array we're communicating with, its type, and its login credentials. So now if oops now if we do LSMCLI list pools that'll show us that we have a one gig pool on on our storage volume. If we list volumes, then it won't show anything because we haven't allocated anything yet. So let's do that now. Alright, so there we go. So if we do volumes again, we have our volume. And it's uh, the key identifier that we'll be using for this volume is the uh, the system ID, which is which is this guy, because the name is less unique. So if we if you create a volume and then you destroy it and then you create another volume it might have the same name but you're guaranteed that it'll never have the same ID so we want to we want to have unique identifiers for volumes so now that we've created that volume we can grant access to it to an initiator So here I'm just giving the name of the initiator we're granting access to. 
the ID of the volume and giving it read write access and it's an iSCSI. There we go. So now if we do if we list the initiators, oh, that's the bug that we I was talking about. So we died over here, so let's just restart it. So if we list initiators, then we can also uh, use another command. to get a list of only the volumes that are accessible to that initiator instead of instead of all the volumes. So there we go. That's the uh, that's the volume that's accessible to that initiator. Now if we switch back over here, shut down that guy and use target CLI, then we can see we can see exactly what we configured via target D. We can see that we have the uh, a block volume that we've allocated from our volume group and that we've seen that we've mapped it to our IQN um, and that we've mapped it to LUN0. So that's everything is reflected both in the target D is reflected in target CLI and if we do an LV display on the target then we can see we can see that information there. So it's just we're just remotely controlling LAO and LVM. Now, in addition to LSM CLI, lib storage management also provides C and Python libraries. So in the future, admin apps may also integrate its capabilities directly. Thanks, that's it. See you next time.